I'm Jeff Yarger. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry of physics, and this video is going to give a short introduction to enthalpy, or H is for enthalpy. Specifically, this is motivated by a Journal of Chemical Education um, article, which I give reference to here, and I'll give more information on this topic as well as uh, a bunch of different topics in thermodynamic concepts at biopchem.education. And so one of the first topics we get introduced to in either chemistry or biochemistry when we start looking at thermodynamics is enthalpy. And I think it's one of the things that often gets confused early on. And so I wanted just to make a short video to introduce not only a little bit of the history uh, but um, also just some of the practicalities for using enthalpy. And I like to start by saying, almost any time you even say, in fact, one of the things I would say if, if you were going to ask somebody if they knew uh, chemistry, biochemistry, were a chemist or a biochemistry, this is almost the question you could ask them is what is enthalpy? It gets used so much ubiquitously in the chemical sciences and is such an important concept. And enthalpy itself is just a form of energy. And it turns out to be, though, a very useful form of energy or a very useful way of looking at energy when you're looking at uh, chemistry and biochemistry. And why was the letter H, um, you know, chosen for enthalpy? Uh, well, it mainly derives from, you know, the use of it as often looking at enthalpy as a form of heat. And we'll look at this uh, specifically. And this article goes through some of the history of how enthalpy got using the symbol capital H uh, to represent enthalpy, its name, and some of its history, uh, which came about at, at about the same time that thermodynamics was being developed, that entropy was being uh, developed, and we were looking at different types of energy. So H is for enthalpy. So we're going to use a capital H as the symbol to represent enthalpy. And what is enthalpy? It's defined to be the internal energy or the energy of a system plus the product of pressure volume. And really at its heart is, is that this is, and, and this will often get represented as a, or used to as an E instead of a U. Modernly, we usually use U to represent the internal energy. However, uh, in the past, E was often for energy used to represent uh, the internal energy of the system. So we have an energy to use here, the internal energy of the system. So why isn't this the one that in chemistry or biochemistry we use most often? Well, and, and it is the internal energy or the energy of the system that often defines, uh, for example, the first law, that we would say that the internal energy is the change in work and the change in heat. And I'm using these to represent um, that uh, they're path dependent, while this is a total derivative that's path independent. Oftentimes these are small um, deltas used as well, uh, representing the same thing. And what I like to write as the combined first second law is defining what these works and heats are. So when we're dealing um, with chemical systems, chemical thermodynamics, it's often the mechanical work of pressure volume. And then heat is always, as defined by the second law, temperature and entropy. So this will come as um, the uh, heat term, TDS, the temperature times the change in its entropy, minus the pressure, the change in the volume. And then whatever other work terms are applicable. In chemistry, this is often the sum on the chemical potential times the change in the number of moles of each of the ith components. And this is kind of what I think of um, as writing the combined first, second law and the most useful in chemistry, where sometimes we write 
uh, this last term, oftentimes when we first start to introduce it, we just write this component. In other words, we start by looking at a single component system where no chemistry or no chemical changes is going on. And we're just trying to define some of the thermodynamics. And what this does, and we have a separate video on this, is it in a sense changes the dependent variables through uh, a Legendre transform of this. And so you can look up the mathematics of that. What we'll show is some of the practicality. So U is dependent, its dependent variables are S, V, and N. The entropy, the volume, and the number of moles. So what H is, is changing those dependent variables, specifically the mechanical one. So it's leaving the heat term the same and it's changing this mechanical variable and this would stay the same. So now H is dependent on S, P, and N. So when we're looking at homogeneous systems where a single component system where you're not undergoing a change in the number of moles, and we do it at constant pressure, which is often what practically we do, then the change in entropy is just equal to the change in heat of the system, right? And so that's why we often say that delta uh, H is the change in heat of a system or that the enthalpy is the energy associated with heat in a system. So before it gets introduced, because before we start looking at kind of the microscopic definition of what entropy is, how it relates to the microscopic world, we think of heat and we often use this type of energy to define that. So this is why it becomes so practical. Um, and it gets rid of our um, mechanical entropy term in this case. It also helps us introduce just looking at energy in a different way and then understanding whether energy is intensive or extensive, how to go from intensive to extensive variables, which we have a video on as well, and looking at just different ways of representing energy um, besides looking at the internal energy of the system. So uh, it's this that, that often gets very useful uh, and often defines what we'll start looking at is it's the most common form of energy uh, that we look at when we're looking at chemical reactions because um, when we start changing the number of moles, we often do this at constant pressure of a system. So uh, the other thing to recognize is, is that when this is done at constant pressure, so that this is the same as the change in heat of a system, then we often look at, at constant pressure, and it, that's one of the important points here, which is uh, oftentimes while we're doing things at ambient pressure, so uh, at a constant pressure, we want to look at its temperature dependence. So how um, the energy, in this case at constant pressure, so the enthalpy changes with temperature at constant pressure and often at constant number of moles, which will go as uh, the change in the heat over the change in the temperature at constant pressure and number of moles. And we call this, we give this a symbol, the, the heat capacity. Uh, and then we put whatever the main variable that's constant. So, and if we keep in constant too, we would often call this the molar heat capacity, which we often represent as a small c or like this are two common ways to represent that. So um, when we start looking at, therefore, the change in, 
H, it'll go as CP DT, or delta H will go CP delta T, assuming that the heat capacity is independent of temperature. Otherwise, you have to integrate uh, what the temperature dependence of that heat capacity is. So this shows you also how we often use heat capacity um, to look at uh, enthalpy changes as well in a homogeneous material where you're not changing the number of moles of anything, you're just changing the temperature uh, of the system. And so between this and you know the fact that it's an extensive variable so that you can sum over each of the enthalpy components uh, of the system, Hess's law, this is how we often start introducing uh, and looking at energy through enthalpy or molar energy through molar enthalpy. So hopefully this gives you a brief introduction to one of the important uh, concepts and types of energy or formalisms for looking at energy and thermodynamics for chemical and biochemical systems. Thank you.